guys and welcome to my first ever review of Boku no Hero Academia and this chapter is chapter 106 um, and yeah let's just get into it. We start off with the announcers kind of telling us where exactly we are, how many people have passed and then we kind of skip to Todoroki as they talk and we find out that he is the 54th I think, yeah the 54th person to make it through this kind of preliminary exam. Um, and he has kind of he has captured, as far as I could tell, a lot of people with ice because, you know, when you, he does that, he can just kind of put the balls on them and he can pass through. What? How many people is it that they need to take down? Two or three people, I think. Um, maybe even four. I don't remember, but that's quite quite hard as they. Yeah. Either way, Todoroki has passed, and he makes like a little comment about how it's still hard for him to control both his ice and his fire because, of course. Dur up until the, um, what was it called, the summer festival arc, he only used his ice because of his like rejection of his father and how his father wanted him to be like the superhero, <laughs> superhero, uh, that used both ice and fire because he was the only one of his siblings who had this. We all know this, I don't know why I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically Toroki has passed, passed, and <laughs> he goes into the waiting room and sees like all these other people who have passed as well. Um, and I think so far he is the only... UA student who to have passed, which makes sense, he's one of the strongest people that the class has and his abilities were quite uh, good for this particular exam. Um, I think him, Ciro and Mineta have the most, um, the best quirks for this kind of situation, but we have like people with, who, like Deku and Kachan who are like really good at using their quirks. Also, if you haven't watched my review, uh, not my review, my live reaction, I refer to Midoriya as Deku and I refer to Bakugo as Kachan because that's just who I am, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, now you know. Um, what was I talking about? Yeah, Todoroki is in the waiting room and he sees that the Shiketsu dude, what's his name again? Inasa, um, who they met just before the exam started, he's like talking to this dude about a hero and he's all fired up and then he kind of looks at Todoroki and he has this, he, his expression changes completely from this super hyped up dude to being like really bloodlusty I think I can't really make sense of his expression but it's like I feel like he's just like holding back some sort of like anger and bloodlust and just like mm, I don't really like you kind of thing um feel free to tell me what you think about that and then he kind of just goes back immediately to being all hot blooded and he's like what were we talking about again and the guy he's talking to is just like I have no clue dude like you, you started this conversation so I, f I find his character really funny like He's always been funny, but I think that his mood swings are just like, just, it takes it up a level, so yeah, that's really fun. We then go to Deku, who's still fighting the Shiketo girl who can change appearances. Um, I don't know if we've got a name for her, I feel like we haven't yet. Um, uh, but at the moment, she's apparently naked. <laughs> Which, um, I'm guessing is making it really hard for Deku to fight her as he's already bad with girls and he's kind of a gentleman-ish type person, so... Seeing her naked is probably not in his favor, um, and she does take advantage of this because he, he, she goes in and kind of scratches him with her nails, which is kind of interesting because her cork doesn't seem to um, make her a better fighter because she can just change appearances. So she must have like learned some techniques, like kind of how Uraraka or Ochako, however you refer to her, how she has um, developed these fighting skills through her period where she was with, I forgot the hero's name, but when they had like their week of hero training with a hero office. So I'm guessing that she's quite skilled at like normal martial arts stuff. Um, as they fight then Deku is kind of saved by Ciro as he cuts, cuts, he kind of separates the two of them, Deku and the Shiketsu girl, with his tape. And right after uh, Ochako comes in and kind of launches for the girl, but she's very fast and dodges and then we have this really <laughs> it's a very beautiful panel of like her naked and very uh skillfully covering all of her um <laughs> her areas uh so that we don't have a nudity panel because of course this is shown in jump and you're not allowed to do that i'm pretty sure so yeah but it's a very nice panel and um as a girl i have no problem with it because i feel like it was very skillfully and gracefully executed um and she kind of tells them like, okay, um, it's quite a shame that you guys showed up because I would have loved to learn more about you, Deku, but now I'm going because it's three against one, I guess, and that's really not in her favor. Again, her quirk allows her to change appearance. I feel like like we haven't gotten um, a box that says this is her quirk, so... 
And also the things around her, it looks like you kind of made of water, so I'm guessing like she has some kind of like mirage um, kind of quirk. I'm not quite sure. We'll find out at some point, I'm feeling. Uh, but yeah, she goes off and then we have Deko, Uraraka, Deko, De Deko, Uraraka and Siro and they confirm that they are in fact all their, them, the real, the real them. <laughs> and they started talking about, okay, we need uh, some kind of plan because we kind of all got separated from the big group. But the three of us should be able to, like, do something about our situation without getting thrown out. Um, and we have this big group of people ganging up on them and Deku starts talking as he usually does because he talks a lot. But basically the plan is to use the fact that there are a lot of people against them and the fact that these people, of course, they only have uh, these three UA students. So that means that obviously they will have to figure out some kind of way to... Um, split the points between them because they only all of them only have like three points of them that can that you can um put their balls on i think Deku has already been hit once um i don't even remember but i think i feel like he's been hit once um and you don't you only get a point if you're the one who puts your like takes the person out of the game again i don't strictly remember the rules um but yeah they need to find like some kind of way to split the points and Deck was like, well, we can use that against them because they will surely be fighting because what's the point of teaming up and then gang up on the UA, stu UA students if you don't get to pass yourself? They also figure out that the best way to deal with them is not to like aimlessly stand at the distance just throwing their balls at them because they only have six in total and I feel like some of them may already have used some of theirs. Um, so they figure out that the best and most certain way to make their balls hit their targets is if they uh, capture them first and then um, yeah and then put the balls on them because then you know you'll hit um, and that's really smart because they have zero there and he's tape and he has really good powers for capturing um, but then they the the group slowly closes in on them and Deku's like okay I'll be the decoy and then you'll attack afterwards so that should work out. Um, also I completely forgot to mention about the naked girl. Um, before she takes off she looks at Uraraka and she's like you're a very trustworthy person aren't you? And she kind of just takes off after that, takes off after that. but I'm feeling like this means that she will probably turn into Uraraka one more time because if Uraraka is a trustworthy person then she can kind of just stroll up to her classmates and they'll be like oh my god it's Oshako look look and she'll then hit them from behind, like how she tried to do with Deku, who fortunately had figured out that's not the real Uraraka. And I feel like I'm just going back and forth between calling Uraraka and Ochako, but I don't know where I stand on her name yet. <laughs> we then go to a Kachan storyline, and we actually first have Kaminari kind of complaining about how he would much rather be with Midoriya's group than with Bakugo's group. I called him Bakugo, wow. Um, because... It feels like Midoriya is probably the better choice. See, I'm not calling them Deku and Kachan anymore. What the hell happened? Um, reviewer mind going in here. But yeah, he's complaining about that and Kachan is just like, Shut up! What, if you don't want to be here, then just leave. And Kamino is just like, what, why, How could I do that? Look at what happened to Kirishima. And then we see that this new Shiketsu dude, I don't think we've seen him before. Um, or even got a name for him. He's made Kirishima into this little blobby thing where he's like... All his like f facial features and his hands are like all over the place in this blob that's not bigger than this. Or, and it's just like, it's really weird. And this Shiketsu dude, obviously, not obviously, he has like a bunch of these blobs just scattered around him. I think there are like 10 or 20. Um, so that's like a really scary quirk. The Shiketsu dude then starts talking about how um, the Shiketsu students, they always like wear their cap, they always wear their uniform because every action they take, that's like a representation of their school. And then he says something about there is a difference between the dignified and the undignified when it comes to being a good hero and the undignified who tries to be these good heroes, that there's just like, they're not an, on the level that the Shiketsu students are on. And he's like, he's acting real high and mighty here. Um, so I can't wait to see Kachin just beating him into a pulp. <laughs> But quickly going back to the blobs that he has created, because obviously if he has taken down this many people, he should have passed already. But I think that there's a drawback in this exam and his like quirk, because if the only way to deal with 
people is to use his quirk on them, but his quirk m makes them into these floppy things, he can't hit his balls on their target things. So I'm wondering what he's like planning to do with them. Do you see what I mean here? Because if he's already beaten like 10 or 15 people, he should already have passed the exam. So yeah, um, that of course gives Kachana good opportunity to beat him, as I really want to see. We, di we did see like a little peek of it, but I want him to like have like a full, not whole chapter, but like a part of a chapter just focused on Kachan be beating him into the dirt. But going back to the Shiketsu Do's monologue, we kind of had to have this really funny panel of Deku just be not Deku, of Kachan being like, I really hate this type of guy, and I agree with Kachan because he's really annoying. Um, and then both Kachan and <laughs> Kaminari, they're like, this dude is like really narrow-minded and he just doesn't understand that his opponents are strong and whatever. <laughs> and the dude is just like really offended and it's just really funny because he went from this really high and mighty dude to DON'T OFFEND MY SMALL EYES, THEY'RE A PART OF MY ATTRACTION. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. But he then after that goes back into monologuing about how he really respected like UA and their students and stuff like that, but then came the current class of 1A and they kind of just drag UA's name through the dirt and he especially distastes, distastes, he doesn't like uh, Kachan and he makes this, these kind of like fingers, this hand with his quirk and charges them at Bakko and from the way it's drawn and from his like blobby things I'm kind of guessing if his quirk is like quicksand related kind of ish. I don't know, like I can't tell but I'm thinking quicksand here for some reason. Um, but then we cut to Aisawa who is sitting with, I forgot to look her name up but I think her name is Joke, I feel like he refers to her as Joke. Um, but yeah, the, she, the two of them are interacting and she's like, are you worried about your students? Um, and then he starts monologuing um, about a good monologue because it goes right in through the heart. Um, but he says that ever since that he's kind of starting observing this class, he has come to understand one important thing, and that is that in this class there are two individuals who are like always in the center of everything that's happening, and whether they know it or not, they their passion and their like enthusiasm for what they're doing that helps along the entire class and it kind of spreads throughout the students and of course he's talking about, as he also says in the end of the chapter, Deku and Kachan and that's just really amazing because these people are probably the most passionate about being heroes and the way that, because we've seen it again and again, especially from Deku, that he inspires other people um, especially like with this chapter we have like confirmation of confirmation <laughs> confirmation of how he's really inspired uh, Uraraka and we know that he's also inspired like Ida who we didn't see in this chapter and Bakugo ha <sighs> Kachan has this really great relationship with um, it, not Kaminari but um, Kirishima and it's just it's really great because they really are like the two who stand on top of the class whether they know it or not uh, one thing that I found interesting though is that Aizawa also said that these two people are not the types of people who like want attention on themselves, which is like, okay, Kachan kind of wants attention, yet I see where you're going with this because throughout like the story, Kachan has has like gone from this bully who was like really attention craving to being more quiet, like he still snaps and swears and really hates Deku, hates Deku, um, but he's quieted down and been, he's becoming a bit more reasonable, I feel like, um, especially after his, like, kidnapping, um, of course that's not really that long ago, but I feel like he's really developing as a character, and, like, I recently read the first volume again, and it's amazing how much he's changed over the course of, like, 100 chapters, um, so yeah, Bakuko's character development is really good, and I can say this because it's my first review, so you're allowed to get all my thoughts now. <laughs> Aizawa does end his like little speech with the fact that he's not worried about his students, he just have really high expectations for them, because of course they have gone through a lot of shit during this like one and a half, not one and a half, like half a year or however long it's been, 
Um, it's not really been that long. And we have this amazing page of uh, the bottom where Aizawa is talking and then on the right we have Deku kicking ass and then on the left we have Kachan kicking ass. And it's just such an amazing panel because the two of them are like, they are the wonder duo, right? So it's just, that's just amazing because I really, as I said in my live reaction, Deku and Kachan, they obviously have history, but that also makes their dynamics so amazing. Again, I can say this. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I just, even if they're not actually interacting, I just like the parallels between them and how Aizawa is like, these two are like the center of this class, even though they are maybe not the best uh, people like in fighting and smartness, I guess. Um, I think it's actually established that Kachan is quite a smart character. I think he's in the top five of like people who get like good grades on not like the hero stuff, but like the normal subjects. Um, so yeah, they are amazing and I love them. A last little note I want to make about the chapter because I feel like I've been talking for a while now, as I usually do with these kind of reviews. Um, the art in this chapter was absolutely amazing and I loved like even the few new characters that we saw, even if they were just like background characters, they were really fun, their designs were fun and their every single panel of Kachan making like an actual expression that wasn't just him talking casually, um, th those panels were just so great and I feel like there was so much work put into the panels of Kachan's like expressiveness expressiveness and yeah and again the last panel was just oh, the last page oh could talk forever about that um but yeah I think that rounds up my review my first ever review of Boku no Hero Academia if you liked anything that I had to say please leave a thumbs up in the video leave in the comments below what you thought of this chapter and I want to know because it's my first review who is your favorite character if you can't already tell mine is Kachan and yeah leave that in the comments below because I am super interested in seeing what you guys think of things like that um, and yeah, if this is the first video you've watched of mine, I do reviews of One Piece, Shokek no Soma, Haikyuu, of course, Boku no Hero Academia, and from this week, also the One Piece anime. So if you're into any of those, then you can subscribe to me, and until next time, bye!